Well, that, the fact that uh, over-the-top streaming services are um, beginning to dominate the marketplace, beginning to make the three networks and the cable channels very nervous. A lot of stories <coughs> recently and just yesterday in the New York Times, the LA Times, all about the threat um, of Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and so forth to broadcasters. They're now fighting back and, you know, trying to say that not that many people are actually watching compared to watch broadcast. It's a, it's a real issue. Um, Disney's having an issue. Uh, they announced they went from uh, on cable subscribers to ESPN from like 98 million homes to 92 million homes in a year. That created a market run of all the historic broadcasting cable companies. So the big issue today is how big does it get? How big does Netflix get? Will it work in all the countries that they're in? They have 70 million homes now. They're in 192 countries, I think. So uh, I know them pretty well because I have a show on Netflix. So uh, I like them. Uh, I like ABC still. I like Disney. I like Disney. No, TV's not dead. But, um, you know, since uh, the 20s and since uh, people thought television was going to kill movies and movies are still alive and television was going to kill radio and radio is still alive and, and uh, video was going to kill television and then DVDs and Blu-ray was going to kill, you know, old video and cable was going to kill broadcast. It never, it doesn't happen. <laughs> what happens is one in one adds up to like 2.5. So if the audience just grows bigger, there's more available access to programming. Um, but when that transition happens, the existing media gets very nervous. Well, it opened during my tenure and it closed after my tenure. So let me make it clear. I, th I thought uh, Florida was a great place uh, for an animation studio. We originally did it because we built a studio and we wanted the studio to be real. And we didn't want um, people to think it was all phony. And then it became quite useful because we made Brother Bear there, we made other movies there, we... we uh, yeah, right, exactly. And, and uh, Florida has become a very diverse, excellent uh, state for talent. Uh, the, the influx of diversity in Miami and moving north has been fantastic, at least in my view. I think diversity is what creates creativity, yeah. despite what some of the politicians say. I see nothing wrong with diversity. <laughs> um, and for that reason, Florida became a really great hotbed of creativity. It still is. Many, many animators, many designers come out of Ringling, uh, come out of Florida, come out of Miami, um, and uh, a lot of production is still in Florida, all kinds of production. So I think uh, uh, with all the, uh, you know, I think 300 television shows are premiering in the next three months. That's the volume of media that's going on today. So that alone is going to force Florida to be a major participant in, in production. Disney seems to be in the process right now of eliminating any semblance of a working studio, Hollywood studios. Is that a mistake? Maybe not for them, because they have a major presence in San Francisco. They have Pixar in San Francisco, and they have Disney in California, so they have a lot of capacity, a lot of cost. And I suspect, although I was not there, but discussed this at some length with some of the people there, um, I, I think they just felt that the cost of animation these movies was getting so expensive that they had to cut, and they couldn't cut off a lot, and they couldn't cut Pixar, so they probably cut the studio. And they probably felt that the, that, that the audience didn't have to have, the, the tourist audience didn't have to have the actual real working studio. I liked it, but economics prevailed. It happens like once a decade, uh, you know, a phenomena. I mean, uh, Lion King, the Broadway show really changed Broadway forever. It was so creative. Julie Taymor did such a great job directing it, adapting it from the movie. I think uh, we're talking about Broadway. Hamilton, <laughs> if you get to see Hamilton in New York, kind of has done that too. In movies, uh, every once in a while, there's something that's uh, extraordinary that, that, that changes it. Uh, I guess uh, physically, 3D changed it. Uh, 
I was skeptical because in my youth, when 3D, 3D came out, it made you nauseous after mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Uh, so there are things that propel forward. Certainly, uh, wireless distribution has changed it on a technical basis. We talked about uh, Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and HBO Go and so forth. That's, that's changed it. Uh, lineal television, you know, where you get used to a show at 9 o'clock on Monday or whatever, uh, is now limited basically to sports and news that you can now see a show anytime, anywhere, whether it's on iTunes or Netflix or whatever. So the world has changed uh, uh, for better, I think. It's, uh, it's more competitive for quality program. There's more quality program. There's a lot of junk. Mm -hmm. We always maintain our level of junk, but there's also a high level of quality that's, uh, that's finding its way on television. It does. But I still think social media is extremely important, and it's important for marketing, and everybody in my industry is agonizing on whether it's Snapchat or Twitter or you know whatever. Uh, I don't think that has really replaced verbal uh, recommendations. I, I still think people will... They, they still do get together on occasion. They do go to school on occasion. They do have families, so there is some conversation. And I think people are still talking about, you know, they'll hear something won an award, They're, they'll hear about, you know, transparent, can you believe this guy wears a dress, and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it, it does, it does, it still is the most important part of marketing.